You're back on the Coaching Corner once again, casting director, producer, and now acting coach, Chadwick Strunk joins us again. Uh, what is it that a casting director teaches actors? I don't ever really consider myself much of a teacher, more of a coach than anything. You know, I don't really, again, I, I like to try and stay out of the way of talent. I like to see what they bring to a scene and then work with them. So I, I effectively go in and I communicate with, you know, different actors wherever I get hired. I don't have my own school per se, but I go to different places, different institutions, sometimes universities. But I just give them, you know, it's, it's film material that I always bring when I work with talent. I usually try to have them work with my material right. and um, just tell them the, the, the way that I like to work and, and, and let them go at it. And uh, usually given the freedom that they can kind of play a little bit and bring a more performance related choices. Um, they usually bring a little something, and I can help navigate what that is. I, I consider it like looking under the hood, you know, and, and seeing what there is, and then kind of helping navigate the talents of each actor. And I think I'm a bit of a confidence builder in the sense of telling people to, you know. Okay, so then you get an actor doing this. Yes, I know. I love you too, and I think someday we will be married. What do you do with someone like that? Well, I guess I have to have my head on the right head on straight first. I need to know if it's a film or TV script. Say it's a film piece. In some cases, I have them just think of character choices altogether and, and have them think of you know different ways to play it altogether and get their brain going in certain directions and have them do a sample, have them try something. Like, you know, let them look deep inside and figure out what they want to do with the character. They come up with a characterization. And I have well, you mentioned that earlier, characterization. What is character to you? Well, you need to come in with a choice and understand, you know, what you're playing as an actor. What's the role you're playing? And you Aren't you playing yourself? Um, in some cases you are, but you no, know, often you are, you know, playing, you know, a professional type, you know, so that's got that procedural thing going on. Other times it's a blue-collar, everyman guy that's shoulders down, an executive, straighter up, more authority. You know, understanding social class, understanding where this person fits into the script, where, where they fit into society, um, looking at a script... Uh, I'm currently on a mockumentary comedy, so some of it is very dramatic and very real. So all the procedural type characters we have are playing it as incredibly straight and real and honest as possible, with no comedy whatsoever. Well, wouldn't you say the best comedic actors always play comedy straight? Like you take Two and a Half Men with Charlie Sheen, he always plays it straight. He just gets laid a lot. <laughs> I think when you're you're in you know situational comedies like that, usually you play to the situation. You're not really trying to add too much to it. You're trying to you know get through the scene and have the material bring the funny. I mean, obviously. Obviously, if you can bring a sparkle of humor without going off the page in a TV script, you know, that's great. It's delivery. It's timing. Right. Okay. Whereas I think um, in film, you definitely want to bring, you know, um, choices. You know, you, you, you can't really be thinking about just the lines alone. You have to be thinking of ways to play it and, and, and performance-related choices, you know. So the stuff in between the lines means so much more in film, whereas in TV... You better be, uh, you know, pretty much on point and let the situations make the funny happen. When you do your classes, do you get into the business side of acting? Not so much. I just try to, you know, you know, tell them the positive things that they need to do to to, to have longevity in the, you know, their Which career. Which is. Um, you know, I think emotional health, you know, knowing that, you know, this is, is more of a, a jog and not a sprint and, and not to, you know, take the, the criticism so harshly. Uh, take the criticism and, and store it in your data banks and, and, and improve based upon that, that, that feedback or criticism. Um, but, you know, move on through, you know, I mean, you're not coming into each audition trying to book the part. You're really trying to come in and, 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 and have a good experience and have that casting office feel good that you're going to come in and do something every time. I like that. You know, just coming in to do your craft, there's no added pressure. You know, it is what it is, and it, it makes for an actor to be relaxed if they approach it that way. I really like that. I just try to ground people out altogether, not to make them think that this is the be-all, end-all. You know, make them feel comfortable in the room and, and teach them ways to make themselves feel comfortable. And, and one is, is, you know, being emotionally strong and, um, you know, making wise decisions with your career. And um, What are wise decisions for one they need to you know have the tenacity and they need to have the endurance to want to stick around and they need to know that this this is a battle but you know the tenacity also is part partly needing help from an agent or manager so you should always be continuously trying to find uh talent representation good habits are you know always you know staying in an acting class um, you know, figuring out ways to work with the other actors perhaps putting together your own independent project film um, 
uh, putting on shows, plays. I mean, there's, there's, there's things that can distract you in a positive way that are going to keep you on your feet as an actor and always have you, you know, working out your creative funny bone or, or whatever it is that you're, you're working at. You yeah, know? I run into a lot of actors. We were talking about this a few weeks ago with acting coach Alan Feinstein. They, they come into L.A., they've graduated from wherever, Possum Breath University. They have their degree, their BFA. When they get here... They no longer study. They're all set to go. Well, I mean, it's like if you your fit is a fiddle and you're physically looking great, you're not going to sit around eating Cheetos and, and just watching movies. You're gonna you're gonna go to the gym and exercise that body and keep it in shape and, and treat it like your temple. Your creativity and your acting skill is something you can't like get dusty either. I mean, your articulators for one, you got to be sharp at the tongue. You also need to read it in ebb and flow. You need to be able to feel very comfortable in your own skin when you perform. And if your mind and body and soul is not conditioned for a particular role, you're not going to be ready for it. What kind of actor do you feel is more conducive in terms of the process, the way they work, to film and television? Would you say it's the method actors, Strasberg? or Stanislavski, or would you say it's the Meisner train? I think they each find their own way, and I think certain actors figure out a way to get their sea legs in, in, in each different format. The one thing that I can say is a classically trained actor definitely knows their full-bodied instrument. They've done voice and movement-related tasks throughout their you know education. They understand what they can do, and they understand um, bold or underplayed, and they're very sophisticated, and in, in, in they've already exercised all those things. So when they go in for TV, they're instrumentally sound. Well, James Franco and East would none of those people are classically trained you can come from a place where you've not been on stage and you've had proper training and done you know but i think that would come from somebody who's never been in, into theater or or tv or any of these things and they've just been pursuing film i mean then that all becomes about behavior and all those things. you are what i would call an actor's casting director you don't have your head up your ass and it's appreciated okay <laughs> chadwick struck thank you for being with us for the last three weeks here on the Coaching Corner. Some great insight, and we always appreciate it. And you guys, don't forget Inside Casting here on the Virtual Channel Network, The Real Deal. Check that out in Actors Rep. It's all here on VCN. And we'll look for you next week with more goodies, some coaching advice for you. Be sure and join us. R.J. Adams, we'll see you next week.